use wheat flour in countless recipes, from chewy loaves of rustic bread and pizza dough to tender cakes and some muffins. All of these baked goods rely on something called gluten. How does this work? First, let's start with a simple question. What is gluten? All wheat flours contain two important proteins, glutenin and gliadin. Now, in the presence of water, these two small proteins change shape and bond together. This creates an elastic network of proteins called gluten, which has the ability to trap air, much like a balloon. This gluten network fills with swollen starch granules and gas bubbles, allowing breads to rise and cakes to gain some gentle structure. Now here in the test kitchen, we've long known that gluten is important in baking, but mainly we've done a lot of talking, not a lot of showing. So what is it on a tangible level? Can you see it? Can you feel gluten? I ran a simple experiment to find out just that. I made two basic doughs by mixing flour and water in a food processor until a smooth ball formed. Now for one dough, I used cake flour, which contains the least amount of protein of all the different types of flour that you can find at the grocery store, between six and eight percent usually. In addition, cake flour is often bleached, which further weakens the proteins. Now for the other one, I used bread flour, which contains the most amount of protein, usually running about 12 to 14 percent, and is generally not bleached. So you can see here, I have two balls of dough, each containing a different amount of gluten. But you can't actually see that, because surrounding that gluten is a whole lot of starch. For the next step, believe it or not, I washed the starch away. I placed each dough in a mesh strainer and massaged them under running water to wash away all of the starch. Once the water ran clear, a sign that the starch was gone, I was left with two piles of essentially pure gluten. As you can see, the differences in appearance and texture of the two are dramatic. The low protein cake flour formed a very small amount of really weak gluten. You can pull it right apart. On the other hand, high protein bread flour formed a large ball of highly resilient rubbery gluten. It can be stretched very thin without tearing. To show just how elastic this bread flour gluten ball is, I'm going to try and do something a little bit crazy. I'm going to treat it like a balloon and inflate it with compressed air. So what have we learned from this experiment? Well, we use high protein bread flour for breads because it develops a lot of very flexible gluten, which, as we've seen, acts like a balloon, trapping air and creating higher rising loaves. Now for cakes, we want just enough gluten to provide a bit of structure without turning them tough. We turn to cake flour for its lower protein content and reduce gluten potential. All purpose flour, as its name suggests, is good for a lot of foods that fall in between these extremes, such as pie dough, heartier muffins, and cookies. So, Next time you're kneading pizza dough, gently folding a cake batter, or considering swapping one type of flour for another, we hope you remember this experiment. This is one case where seeing really is believing.